All right, so Steve, uh, Steve Rothenberg is going to talk to us about congenital cystic lung lesions, thoracoscopic resection. So uh, this is just a case presentation um, to talk about <coughs> some of the controversies, or if there are controversies, regarding uh, the management of uh, CPAMs or congenital malformations of the lung. Um, yeah, see if it works. Yeah. yeah. So this is a case. Um, this was a child who prenatally had a diagnosis of a uh, congenital cystic lung disease on a prenatal ultrasound. The patient was uh, referred for, um, uh, uh, oops, sorry, was referred for um, uh, prenatal consultation um, from the perinatologist with us. Uh, prior to doing that, um, they obtained a fetal MRI, which showed a 4x3x2.5-centimeter uh, uh, cystic mass in the right lower lobe with evidence of a feeding vessel. So the first question would be, how many in the panel would get a fetal MRI for a cystic fetal lung lesion? Anybody? Personally or at our center? At, <laughs> well, I, I think personally. <laughs> right. That's your chance. I mean, I, I, I find that more and more are being being obtained, but they really don't change what I do at all. Is that yeah. pretty much? Well, yes, yes and no. I mean, you are trying to decide whether uh, you're going to give them steroids or not, right? I mean, someone is. So that's the reason and the indication to get an imaging study so that you're going to do something about it. Like you said, I completely agree. And if it's microcystic and a certain size, then at some centers you are going to get uh, steroids that will change the course at a certain <coughs> point. So if you're going to do it for that reason, absolutely, you should be getting imaging studies under whatever protocol that you have. You got to check your ultrasound uh, the prenatally to make sure that you're within your own parameters that make sense, and that makes sense. But if you're just getting it because it's cool, that's not an indication to get it. And sometimes that's the reason people get them is I just wanted to know. That's not acceptable in my, in my opinion. If you're going to do something about it, sure. I think it partially depends on if the uh, fetus is manifesting signs of high drops or something like that. So well, that's a different case, but if, yeah. if they're not, if they're not manifesting signs. If there's no evidence of high drops, I don't or think that an MRI is really going to change it. Yeah, but I, yeah. there are centers where everybody who has any cystic uh, lung lesion found on ultrasound do get an MRI. And I, but I think Abdullah makes a good point. If yeah. you're going to give steroids, then there's then you need to know. Yeah, and you can give steroids even if they don't have manifestations right. of high drops. If they meet whatever criteria right. you've set out in your in your hospital, you are still intervening on the baby, on the fetus, yeah, if, and if you're going to do that, yeah. but like you said, if you're not if you're not going to do that, then you shouldn't get it. Right. Correct. We shouldn't get any test unless it's going to change the fit. Right. Correct. Getting back to the line <laughs> placement in the colon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyway, this child had that. We we spoke with the child. Now, how many? I mean, some of you are in. Uh, um, isolated children's hospitals and some of you in women and children's. How many people, uh, if you had a delivery service, would have this mother deliver at your hospital as opposed to an outside institution? In your institution, Mac, you would because you're combined. Anybody else feel strongly? We, we have a combined hospital, and, and in this case, um, uh, this, this, actually, this case actually was uh, from New York, but this... Uh, mother did deliver um, at Columbia. Anyway, the baby was born at uh, 39 weeks. The APGARs were 9 and 9, and the baby had no respiratory distress. And a uh, chest x-ray was obtained, which showed uh, um, cystic lung disease. And I think the next slide kind of shows that. So that's the, the initial film at, film at birth. Um, baby's on room air, doing well. What, what, uh, what would... Uh, anybody uh, do at this time? So this is a question uh, for, the, for the audience. But the postnatal workup at this point, asymptomatic <coughs> infants, that chest x-ray, um, <coughs> would, you, would you watch them? You know, just watch them. Would you do further imaging <coughs> at that time? Or would you go straight to surgery? Mark, we put that poll up? Yeah. Great. Did that x-ray show mediastinal shift? I, it was my past. It looked uh, a little concerning. Or is it I think it's a little rotated. Okay. So I don't. I don't so, think really the child had any mediastinal shift, and it's a little hazy. Part of this is quality of the film and its initial, but. but so, so basically, a stable kid, no mediastinal shift. Right. But you can see the lesion on the. Uh, right. On right. the on the X-ray. Right. So, how many on the panel are going to book that kid for surgery <coughs> in the next couple of days? No. Nobody. No. Okay. 
You? No, I, I, I wouldn't. Okay. I wouldn't. Yeah. The only, the only, <laughs> you do do it earlier than others. Well, I do. Yeah, the only way I would do this. So we live in a in, in Denver. We have people who come to deliver from a thousand mile radius because of the the large expanses that we cover. And if this family came and it was a huge hardship for them to come back and forth, and they said we really want this done, um, and that was going to be an issue in the management, or if I was somewhat concerned based on. I've had a couple kids who are asymptomatic but have giant cysts, and I'm worried that sending them home is going to be a problem, then we will operate earlier. So a uh, quick, uh, quick question from the audience, and I open this up to anyone, maybe Abdullah, whoever, or Dan, whoever feels they can answer this. Quick review of indications for prenatal steroids. What, what is your, you said whatever your hospital does. What right. Is, what yeah, is, I was actually just typing it up now while, okay. while, while okay. we're discussing. But since yeah. you're asking, I mean, the indications differ depending on your institution, but you got a prenatal ultrasound, and you want to decide, okay, is this something worrisome or not? And if it looks like a big mess, and it really is just kind of reading the prenatal ultrasound once you get comfortable with that, the radiologist, the uh, uh, MFM, the maternal fetal medicine, or the surgeon. And you're like, okay, fine, it's kind of a big mess. And then you measure out pretty much the CVR. And, and for most people, you know, the, you kind of use a 1.6 cutoff to see if this is big enough um, to be worrisome. You don't want to wait for the high drops per se. And then um, you, wa you want to decide if this is a microcystic lesion or a macrocystic. My understanding is it doesn't really work on the macrocystic lesion, so you really got to try the, the microcystic. And this was a coincidental kind of uh, finding from the folks at UCSF that sought uh, um, for different indications and they said, oh, these lesions literally did not either, the baby grew and the mass stayed the same or the lesion grew, uh, okay. uh, stayed low. So that would be an indication too. Okay. To do it, and then you know, the, there's one other point. If you're not at an institution that's comfortable with that, then you should be able to manage with your prenatal uh, folks a protocol of some kind, so that if you find that patient, you should refer them to someone that does. So that may be another reason to get a fetal MRI to be like, okay, this is a big lesion. I don't know. Do we give steroids or not? I, we don't do this at, with us, but send them someplace that does. Yeah. And there are good centers. That, I mean, Cincinnati's yeah. one as well that does that. That does that. Sorry, Steve. Good point. No, Thank you. For no, that's center. good. Yeah. Do we have the poll results? Is there anything? Yeah. Like so, that? Stephen, can we throw those poll results up? It looks like uh, sixty-two percent would do observation and uh, thirty-seven percent further imaging. <clears throat> Nobody would go to the OR. Okay. <coughs> uh, uh, I think that's appropriate. So. This, this child was actually was doing well, lived in the New York area, was sent home, and, and came back at three months, um, and a CT was obtained, which showed this. Would anybody do anything other than a CT scan? So we had this discussion at our radiology conference last week, and surprisingly, one of the radiologists actually suggested why get a CT scan. If you can see it on the plain film, you know it's there. What is, what, how does the CT scan change the fact that at three months or six, four, four months, whatever your cutoff is, that you would just take it out? It's really so why get a CT scan? A why not just get a plain film if it's still there, which presumably it would be? You just take them to the OR. I think, I think that's a good question. I, I mean, I feel very strongly not about not getting studies. I don't know. I think that it, but when you're doing something that's a bit more complicated like this, and I think it can help a little bit in the planning. I think it's not always clear on the chest x-ray what lobe it's in. Parents like to know. They don't want to just have you say, well, I'm going to go ahead and take out one of the lobes of your children. I'd like to know what lobe it's going to take out, how much of their lung, what are other issues or, or in, indications. Um, if you're concerned about a combined lesion, you know, is there a systemic vessel? But again, I always look for a systemic vessel, whether there is one or not. So I think you can make that, that argument. Um, I think that I would tell you medical legally that if you went in and did this and you had a complication and you hadn't gotten a CT scan, that someone would get up and say you should have absolutely gotten a CT scan when you did it. I, I will argue somebody would get up and say almost yeah. anything if you yeah. have any complications. But somebody but would argue the opposite too. Exactly. Yeah, so, exactly. yeah. And I, I mean, but, my practice has been to get CT right. scans, but I think it was, it's an interesting challenge. No, it's, to, well, I, th I think you find multifocal disease because, right. because occasionally yeah. in a certain percentage of these kids, you're going to have multifocal disease, and you want to know if you're dealing with more than one lobe, or sometimes you'll have disease in all three lobes, and that may change your management. Those, those are the complicated patients. You sit there and say, well, do you take this out, see what happens in the other two? Do I take, you know, do I just watch them? I mean, no, I think that's a good point. I've, I've, I've had three patients, it's a, you know, in a few hundred that have had bilateral disease that we had to alter their management based on yeah. finding what appeared to be evidence of bilateral CPAMs. 
So I think that's a very good point. So this scan was done at, uh, at three months of age. Um, so how many in the panel would operate now? Three months? Yeah. Why wouldn't you operate three months? It's just so much easier when they're nine months. Oh, absolutely not. Uh, it's I, I so much easier. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't teach you anything? I didn't yeah. teach you anything? It I did it so at, much I, I, I did it at, at I mean, it, the size increases, the, the circumference of the yeah. baby's chest increases dramatically. I wouldn't wait past nine months. No, but, it's, it, I mean, we'll, we can talk about <laughs> this, but there's no question. And, the, and we've actually published a side study now that shows the operative time is less, the complication rate is less when you do these patients earlier. But it's, it's uh, because these, these what the thing with these kids is they have, they will have subclinical inflammation and infection. And when the difference between three months and nine months, the, the, the amount of inflammation in, in a fissure or the number of enlarged lymph nodes um, is significant and make, can make the procedure significantly more difficult. I mean, I agree if you wait years, but between three, six, and nine months, you, yeah, you really think there's, there's a absolutely. major difference? Absolutely. Do the patient have any symptoms at this point? Patient's asymptomatic. Totally asymptomatic. Totally asymptomatic. It, it would would anybody be... never do an operation? Would anybody just follow this kid? Well, Jack Langer's not on the phone line. <laughs> <laughs> It would be interesting to see. I mean, we have a very international audience. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah, I mean, is, is this? And I think if could we poll? Could we do a poll question? Like, do you, do you, do you what? Do you observe or do you operate? Right. So the or way I would phrase that, Mark, if we could do it on the fly, or who are we sending this to, Zach, or Jen, or whoever? Can we uh, open a question saying, do do you always operate on a congenital lung lesion, an asymptomatic congenital lung lesion? You want to put a size in there? Because if they're real small, does that affect you? What? It affect, It certainly affects Jack. Um, you know. Is that and, right? Yeah. yeah. And and uh, you know they'll continue to observe very small ones. So. Todd, can I ask you a question? If the child's still asymptomatic, that's the X-ray. What's the indication to operate on? If the child's still asymptomatic. Asymptomatic. Okay. Well, you so know, you know, it's six months. Right. You got that <laughs> is this extra a setup? bit. Yeah. Tell me, yeah, it is a setup. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, what is the indication to do an operation now? Well, to this be was the, the devil's whole debate advocate. That we, I don't remember if you were on that faculty. This was the debate that is my favorite film to watch between Alan and Steve <laughs> fighting with uh, Jean Martin and Jack. <laughs> Um, but the risk of infection, the risk of cancer. What's right. the risk of cancer in that? <laughs> well, that we're going to get to that. <laughs> oh, all right. I so okay. I think you know that's, but that's that's the debate, and that's the question around the world: is do you need to operate on these? If this was a little bit smaller, or if there was an issue. So while we're getting the poll, actually, I just for the. So we have the we answer have the, is sixty-two percent always operate on asymptomatic lung lesions, but it keeps increasing here. Now it's seventy percent always operate on asymptomatic lung lesions. Thirty percent do not. Can we have